Hello, my friends. I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope everything is great. Um, I'm carrying around Player's Handbook because I've been reading it today off and on and uh, spending some time kind of refreshing myself on the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I think that um, one of the fallacies of learning to play a role-playing game is the idea that you have to read this book and that you have to read the Dungeon Master's book and that you have to read the Monster Manual and that you have to really understand all of these rules before you can even start to play and that's just a complete falsity. Um, character creation does not need to be this much and how to play can be a very short primer and I think that the starter set does that really well and you could just jump right into the game with that and you could basically play with that forever I mean the only thing that you wouldn't be getting out of that is leveling and and wizard spells beyond second level I think or maybe even there might even be third levels in that book but there's a whole you know whole range of other spells available in this book so you're missing some you know and character creation but how to play the the section in that book on how to play how combat works how statuses work that's it like you don't really need the rest of this but the point is we played a second session yesterday uh me and and uh and ro and and Kai, and we had a good time, I think. It was a very short session, and this is the thing that I'm learning with them. Um, my youngest doesn't... Her attention span is extremely short, like minutes. So I think yesterday we maybe got in like a, an hour of actual playtime. Um, we got through essentially one little encounter with a couple of goblins and a, a cursory exploration of the second area of the uh, Fandelver, Lost Mine of Fandelver um, scenario. And I think what I have learned is, uh, I will agree, I've, I've read that, that Lost Mine of Fandelver quite a bit, and I really enjoy the premise of it, and I really enjoy, you know, this, this starter set that you buy for like, it's, I think the retail price is 15 bucks, but you can get it on Amazon for 12. And I'll put a link in the description if you want to check all this stuff out because I constantly keep talking about D&D right now. But that that expand, or that little adventure that comes in that pack takes you to like 5th level or something, which is huge. You know, for characters uh, in D&D, 5th level is like, you can take on some big stuff, you know. Spellcasters just learn Fireball and you can just nuke things. And, it, you know, you can, you're a pretty good character. So it's a big adventure, which is good because if you've never played the game and you are intimidated by the cost of buying the three core books, the hundred and it'd be a hundred and twenty dollars or whatever to buy these three books retail or maybe even more than that. Um, it, if that scares you, then that starter set gives you hours and hours and hours of play. I would say that for a new group, especially if you don't have a, a DM who's used to playing and you don't have players who have ever played, if this is like, we're going to try this thing, there's like I don't know, maybe four or five, maybe even six full play sessions in that box, in that adventure. Like, you can really, you know, you should basically be getting one level per play session. So there's at least five hours or five, not hours, probably more like 10 to 15 hours of play time in that box. But for my kids, it's a little much, I think. And maybe it's on me. Maybe I need to do a little bit more preparation. So we sat down last night. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of spoil a little bit of the adventure, so if you don't want to hear about it, maybe skip. But we sat down, and I have a battle mat, and I had already drawn out the starting area where we left off the last time. The girls had tracked some goblins through the woods, and or well, not the girl, the, the thief is a male, so Jeffrey and, and the wizard, uh, Chartreuse, <laughs> had tracked the goblins through the woods, and they ended up at the mouth of this cave with a stream and some dense brush. And um, they kind of routed around the, the brush, went, and when they started to step into the water, some goblins came after them. They got spotted, right? And it was a quick little fight. Essentially, their helper, Kosef, uh, um, like, you know, cleaved a goblin in half. Uh, the wizard uh, finished him off with an arrow. 
and the thief um, thoroughly eviscerated a goblin with a backstab. And so then we kind of worked our way in, and as we went along, I drew on the map the rooms as they opened up. There's some there's some creatures in there that they don't necessarily have to fight, and they, they kind of hem and hauled about that. And then we worked our way around, and, and the thief snuck up a little trapped area. It wasn't trapped, but an area that collapsed, and and her or him and the warrior succeeded, and they get up, and, and she was able to survey the room without being spotted. He was able to survey the room without being spotted, and came back down and then they decided to go a different way and there was a lookout and the thief spotted the lookout and was able to take him out with one shot from her bow from his bow and then they went up and that's kind of where we ended and it, it so really not a whole lot happened there was a little bit of role playing because the 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 wizard character uh chartreuse <laughs> which is my my oldest character is a little bit contrary she wants to play this kind of you know Eh, I'm not whatever you guys do whatever you want to do so she's uh, being a bit of a contrarian which is a dungeon master is very difficult to deal with because you know the group isn't united on this front of, of assaulting this cave so she was kind of just hanging back while Jeffrey and Kosef were just kind of all right well I'll go do the thing and then you guys follow me or whatever and we ate pizza in between but we had we had good time like we had some fun dice rolls um, Jeffrey my youngest character got he got hurt pretty bad by one of the goblins. We had to take a rest. I let them rest and, you know, roll some hit dice and get some hit points back. So, you know, all in all, it was a good session, but the adventure that comes in that box is probably a little much for them because it it, it kind of expects you to, this, this little scenario that they're on right now, to be the end of the first session. So you're looking at like two to three hours for a normal group to complete this couple of little instances where you get attacked on a road, you follow some people up to a cave, you explore this cave, you kill some goblins, you find a captive, you, there's a there's another there's a chief in there that you have to take down. Um, that's like considered to be a session. But for us so far it's been two sessions and we're not even two thirds of the way through it. So we still have if I can get them to sit tight and finish out this exploration, there'll be some fun role playing before we get on with the rest of the adventure. So I'm still excited about it, and I've been reading up on on some stuff just for inspiration. I have started to write a quick adventure that I'm going to run um, for my friend who asked me to who asked me to run a game for him for his birthday. So I'm working up a really quick uh, adventure that just has about just a few encounters, a, a simple couple of simple dungeon crawls, a couple of simple encounters, just a session, maybe a couple of hours, three hours, something like that. Uh, that we can all sit in, in front of our computers and play because they're uh, um, halfway across the world. Uh, and I think it's going to be fun. And hopefully I'll have it written soon enough that I can play test it with some friends locally. Or maybe even if you're interested, I'll play test it over Skype or something before I run it for them. Uh, but <laughs> it's been fun. You know, it's been really fun. And I've been enjoying Baldur's Gate on my Switch. And I just discovered that the rest of those games that came out around that same time... Um, Neverwinter Nights and the Planescape game, eh. But Neverwinter Nights and whatever the other one's called are also available for the Switch. So I'll be picking those up too because um, Baldur's Gate's been really fun. It crashes sometimes, but the point is we had, we had fun playing. And I hope that we're going to play some more this weekend. I left everything set up. I redrew the map. I think maybe if I were to do this all again with, with younger people, um, I'll probably do what I'm going to do with the with the game that I run online. Uh, I'm going to break the map up into pieces that I can pre, you know, draw either on the computer or manually, and then cut out. And I could just lay out the new pieces of the map as they get uncovered, and I won't have to try to take time to draw these things because I think that's when we lost a lot of steam. So we shall see. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you and I will see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is bumptuous. It is an adjective meaning loud and assertive in a crude way. The club's golf pro was fired because of his bumptuous behavior on the links. Bumptuous, B-U-M-P-T-I-O-U-S.